The new Amsterdam theater. There we go. Someone just backstage said, wow, oh, it was Telly. I heard it was Telly. Wow, I was looking backstage. I agree. Uh, the New Amsterdam Theater opened in 1903, and over the next century was the home of many glorious, glorious Broadway shows, including, of course, the Ziegfeld Follies. When it closed in 1981, it had been a seedy, decrepit movie house for years, as most of 42nd Street had fallen from grace. 42nd Street falls from grace. Falling next from grace. Yeah. The sequel, 42nd Street 2. <laughs> God, that'd be a great sequel. Peggy Sawyer is like a hooker. You know. or, as I sometimes joke, if you take like, the lawn all the way up, you, you end at like 242nd Street. <laughs> so I don't know, I'm like 242nd Street. It's a slightly different tale. Anyway. So Mayor Giuliani, as we know, began the big cleanup of the city um, and of 42nd Street. The Walt, Walt Disney Company joined in. Disney would renovate and reopen the new Amsterdam on the Broadway um, and, as a Broadway theater and movie palace. Now, the theater would open in 1997 with a nine-performance engagement of King David, a new musical by Tim Rice and Alan Menken, who had written Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin together. Now, after that, they'd offer a Hercules summer spectacular, including a stage show and the movie in the fall, and a live musical of Lion King would open. I said enough all. King David did not get great reviews, and word around town was that maybe Disney had selected King David as not to steal the thunder from the theater itself. <laughs> uh, John Simon called it a horror torio, and I know, it gets worse. This next thing is terrible. Uh, John Simon extended his condolences to such deserving performers as Marcus Lovett, Alice Ripley, Stephen Bogardus, Martin Vidnovic, and Judy Kuhn, but had no sympathy for Roger Bart's obnoxiously sung and acted Jonathan. Oh. I really hope that, oh, he didn't read that. Uh, other performers in King David included Miss Sally Wilford, Keith Byron Kirk, and Hunter Foster. Who's that? <laughs> the renovated New Amsterdam was breathtaking. Giuliani said, it really represents the restoration of New York City as the capital of the world. The reopening marked a turning point in the revival of Times Square and 42nd Street. While King David's You know, this isn't still Giuliani's quote, right? Oh, okay. No, I missed the end of it. No, I'm just like, well, where, did the, where did it end? It's okay. No, there's no, there's no end quotation marks, so I thought he said this. Anyway. We are so drunk on musical theater after the beginning of this concert that we're like, we're so going to... So anyway, I'm from Long Island, so I can talk about that way anyway. But while King David's... Oh, he's someone from Long Island. Uh, while King David's reviews weren't as good as the New Amsterdam's, Many did admire the serious and often powerful work. It was originally conceived as an outdoor oratorio uh, to premiere in Jerusalem, so it was no wonder that it didn't jive with the expected Broadway fair. <laughs> <laughs> two years earlier, two years earlier, Giuliani and Michael Eisner were walking in Times Square and talking. Eisner told Giuliani that he didn't know if Disney could have a presence on a street dotted with pornography parlors. Oh, well, be gone, said Giuliani. <laughs> Two years later, this conversation was brought up during a press conference for the new theater, and Eisner said, I don't know where those porn palaces went. Fifth Avenue? Governor Pataki answered with a smirk, New Jersey. <laughs> Eisner quickly cut in and said, I didn't say that. The Disney Company loves New Jersey. <laughs> Um, <laughs> King David has had several notable productions since its Broadway bow, most notably at the Hollywood Bowl and at NYU Steinhardt in 2008. <laughs> Fans of that production include... And or NYU Steinhardt. Um, here to sing from King David, our own musical director, Kayla Hoyer. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to tell a little, we usually take a moment out of the concert and talk about why we do this show and what the spirit of it is. And after our last concert, I said, I want to do King David next time because my relationship with this show, to me, like typifies why we do a concert like this. Um, I grew up, if anyone doesn't know, in Kansas. And, um, and so how does someone in Kansas get interested in musical theater, you ask? Disney movies. That's how you hear musical theater writing, and that's how I heard musical theater writing. And that's how I came to know who Alan Menken was. And, uh, and so once I became obsessed with Alan Menken, I, I bought everything I could, including the like quickly out of print 
cast recording of highlights from King David. And I listened to it obsessively, nonstop. Um, and I loved it. And, and I, I would scour the internet looking for, does this show get done? And realize, no, the show doesn't get done. It, it's not licensed, so like any production of it that happens, happens through a huge special arrangement with the authors. And um, so I thought, oh, I'm never going to get to see this show. And I knew that it was highlights. I'm like, what else, what else am I missing? And uh, I'm like, I'm never going to hear it. So, so yeah, so high school is pretty hard. And, uh, It gets better. <laughs> it gets better. Um, so, but then in college, I, I came to NYU, and um, and just things things started coming full circle in really strange ways. Um, I was in a composition program that had a scholarship awarded by Alan Menken, and I got it. I was like, oh my god, Alan Menken listened to my music. I liked it. Um, and then my senior year, uh, I did a musical review of Alan, Alan, Alan's music. And we invited him, and he came, and he loved it. And, uh, and he was talking to the head of the department, and he said, you know, we should really do King David here. And so, cut to the next fall, I'm sitting on the stage of the Skirball Center in the orchestra for King David, this show I never thought I would get to see. And Alan Menken is giving a speech saying, I decided we should do this when I saw a musical review here last spring, music directed by Caleb Hoy, and he turns around and he points at me. And I just think, and that's why I think it doesn't matter if the show got good reviews or bad reviews, because it had an impact definitely on me. And what, what, is the, what higher goal for art could there be than to have an impact on, uh, on young people and, and artists. And so. uh, it was really hard to decide what song to sing because King David has these killer group numbers, like Saul has slain his thousands and Caravan moves on and, um, and I, I'm not, you know, a group. So I, I thought, well, what can I do? And um, when we did the show at NYU, the actor playing David was not there for like the first week or two of rehearsal because he was coming off of a tour and coming back. And, um, and so we were in rehearsal staging this song that I'm going to do. And the director said, um, he's like, I think this is one of the most beautiful songs in this show. Kayla, will you sing it while we run the, the blocking? It's like, okay. <laughs> So, this is, uh, it was the end of Act One, uh, after Saul and Jonathan have died, and uh, David sings, How Are the Mighty Fallen? i 
Krishna.